Up With Crim begins now. Right now on Up With Crim, we're taking you outside and talking changing air quality throughout the day. You've got good air quality now and some cool temperatures. Now's the time to open those windows. The city is responding to record drought in our area. This morning, we are looking into what they're doing now to conserve water. Yeah, that's right. More of this yellow or what they're calling gold grass is what you'll find because of these signs right here. This saying go gold to save blue. And there's a primary election just around the corner. What you need to know ahead of the election that's just two weeks away. We're beginning this morning with breaking news, though. Washington State Patrol is asking for your help to find this missing Spokane teen. Kaylee Kelly went missing four days ago on July 18th. She is 16 years old with blue eyes and blonde hair. Anyone who sees her is asked to call the Spokane County Sheriff's Office at the number there on your screen. Happening right now, the drought in Washington is worse than it's been in more than 100 years. Earlier this month, Governor Jay Inslee declared a state, the state in a drought emergency. Now the city of Spokane is doing what it can to cut down on usage by not watering public lawns. Nicole Hernandez joining us live to tell us about their plan. Good morning, Nicole. Yeah, good morning, Kim. So you might have actually seen these signs around the city with the saying go gold to save blue underneath in the small print. It's the city's way of doing their part to save water here in Washington state during this drought. So that means you're going to see more of this gold, this yellow dying grass around our city. They're planning on stopping watering in city right of ways at water services sites here at fire departments as well, which is where we're standing and other city properties across our area at this point. And they're going to continue doing this until those drought conditions improve. So let's take a look at exactly why this is happening a little bit more in depth. So like Tim mentioned, Governor Jay Inslee did declare the state in a drought emergency, which essentially just means that the state's water supply is projected to be below 70% of the average. The drought has already taken a toll on farmers and wildlife in the state. So like I mentioned, the city is doing their part by stopping watering in a lot of their uh, city properties, but they're asking the people here that are living here to do the same thing, to conserve water. And one of the best ways to do that is to limit the amount of times that you water your lawn. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Some great advice. And this morning we want to know, are you going to conserve water this summer? Is there any way you're doing it already? So, or do you have any ideas? Let us know by texting us at 509-448-2000. We'll talk about some of the tips that you have for us this morning. One of the tips Jeremy is going to be doing is maybe watering every three days instead of every other day. Yeah, I, th I think just those little differences will make yeah. it. I, uh, Tim, as you know, I've been battling the yard since I moved <laughs> into the house and uh, it's been a losing battle so far. I finally have some green blades of grass and Ooh. as we start to conserve water, part of me is going, oh man, I worked hard. The other part of me is going, ah, whatever, it's just grass. So. <laughs> I think I'm just going to try to do enough to maybe keep it alive until we there do get some moisture. And that is uh, typically the middle of September for us. So, you know, we'll do our best for now. Let's talk about what we've got because it's nothing but sunshine in the forecast. We got pretty lucky getting some rain in Spokane yesterday. Many areas around us a little to none recorded and we got 12 one hundredths of an inch. Early on this morning, our temperatures are trending a bit cooler. We're still down in the low 50s in Spokane, 58 in Coeur d'Alene, 61 in Sandpoint, 60 in Moses Lake. You know what I should do? I should look up the last time we dipped into the 40s. Air quality concerns in north central Washington. That is one of the things we are going to continue to monitor, monitor today because it's likely some of that smoke starts making its way toward us here in Spokane and that is going to likely happen a little bit later on today. And so as wind picks up throughout the day or well, wind shifts directions, let's say as it gets more westerly later on this afternoon, that's likely when we wind up seeing some of those air quality concerns. And that's one of the things we'll kind of keep a close eye on later on today. Temperatures are going to climb, though. We're up in the 80s later on this afternoon. And if it sounds like I'm a bit distracted, it's because I am. And Tim, I just looked it up. So as I send things back to you, the last time we dipped into the 40s in a morning, it was June 16th. What? It's now officially been more than a month since we've seen the 40s wow. and we didn't get there today. So maybe, but probably oh. not this weekend. All right, but 52 feels pretty good. Oh, yeah. 
All right, it is time for your morning rush. More news in less time. Tomorrow, all public lands in eastern Washington will be closed to public access. Department of Natural Resources says this is due to high fire danger. All wildlife areas, including water access areas, will also be closed in eastern Washington. And to be clear, these are public lands. Private campgrounds will be making their own decisions. If you have a camping reservation this weekend, you might want to check with that campground. The U.S. is extending border restrictions to all non-essential travel as COVID cases continue to rise. Borders with Mexico and Canada will remain closed through August 21st. The restrictions were set to end today. It comes on the heels of Canada's announcement this week that it would reopen its borders to fully vaccinated Americans and permanent residents starting on August 9th. A mosquito sample in Grant County tested positive for West Nile virus. The Grant County Health District says this happened last week. It might sound concerning, but people, no people tested positive for the virus so far, and most people infected will not get sick. Only one in five people have mild symptoms. West Nile, though, can be harmful to birds and horses. Now, if you're eating a muffin for breakfast this morning, heads up, you might want to check the label. A company that sells muffins at 7-Eleven and Walmart issued a recall for listeria concerns. Give and Go Prepared Foods Corporation makes the muffins you see there on your screen. You can find the full list on creme.com. Mild symptoms of listeria can include fever, muscle aches, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Netflix is adding a new attraction to its marquee, video games. The streaming giant says it will offer video games in an existing, two existing subscription plans at no extra cost. However, we don't know yet what games are in development or when the service will launch. But we are definitely, of course, going to be following this story. That's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. Well, the 2020 election feels like it just happened, but in less than two weeks, Washington State will hold a primary election on August 3rd. Brandon T. Jones joining us live to talk about what's on the ballot. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Tim. Yeah, I'm outside of City Hall this morning and we're breaking down a field of candidates who are up for a new position or trying to get elected in the city council and school board positions. We're going to start things off with the city council in Spokane County, Spokane Valley, and uh, here races with more than two candidates will see candidates eliminated this election. The top two will move on to the general election in all of the races, but one has at least three. Let's talk about the positions really quick. There are two Spokane City Council position races to vote for in the primary. The District 1 and the District 3 seats are both open for the taking. The District 2 race has only two candidates, so both candidates will move on to the general election. There are three positions open for Spokane Valley City Council. Position 4, Position 5, and Position 7. All three incumbents are seeking re-election, but that did not stop the number of opponents. Each race has at least three challengers. In our next half hour, we'll be talking about the school board positions up for grab. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about how you can vote. You can vote by mail. So the sooner, the better, but just make sure you drop off the mail-in ballot by 8 p.m. on election day, or you can vote at a county elections office in person until the day of elections on August 3rd. You could also register to vote on that day and have your vote count. That's a lot of information, so go ahead and text us the word ELECTION to 509-448-2000. We'll send you a complete guide directly to your phone with all of that information I just went over. Tim? Thanks for breaking that down. Well, this next story lighting up social media. Everyone talking about this one. Washington State University's head football coach announcing that he will not be getting the vaccine. And now many are responding. Anybody in a leadership position in the state of Washington, I believe has an obligation to lead and use their leadership position to save lives. How you at home are also reacting to the news. 